Artificial Ice Zone, Observations and a New Parameterization Scheme for Weather and Climate Models. The marginal ice zone is the transition between consolidated ice and open ocean. It's a very rough region. There's vertical edges in the form of the edges of ice flows and, and leads. Uh, and so this roughness means that when you pass air over the surface, you get the generation of turbulence in the boundary layer that is associated with, with a, a drag force exerted on the flow and also with uh, the generation of uh, turbulent scalar fluxes of, for instance, heat and, and moisture. During cases of cold air outbreaks, um, which in the northern hemisphere means northerly winds bringing very cold air from the high latitudes over the um, warmer ocean, you will get upward heat fluxes and, and moisture fluxes. But the distribution and magnitude of these fluxes depends critically on, on the surface roughness um, uh, over the sea ice and the marginal ice zone. These turbulent fluxes of momentum and scalar constituents over sea ice are, are known to be important, influencing weather systems, ocean circulation and deep water formation, and sea ice melting and transport. Uh, but observations of them are difficult to come by and are, are quite limited. And partly as a consequence of this, uh, their representation in numerical models uh, has been quite crude. Now, in recent years, there has been some considerable improvements in the representation of momentum exchange over the marginal ice zone, uh, but the scalar exchange representation has lagged behind somewhat. So for, for heat, for example, um, the exchange coefficient is given uh, as a function of the roughness lengths for momentum and heat, and then uh, the, the heat roughness length is given in turn as simply proportional to the momentum roughness length uh, with the constant of proportionality um, varying considerably between uh, different models. The exchange coefficient uh, as a function of ice fraction is then given simply as a linear interpolation between that for uh, water and that for ice, um, and a similar treatment is used for moisture exchange. With the goal of improving our understanding and capacity to model these turbulent fluxes over sea ice and the marginal ice zone, we've obtained in, in recent years a, a large number of additional um, observations in the Arctic surface layer uh, from two different field campaigns, the Acacia field campaign from 2013 around Svalbard and the IGP field campaign from um, 2018 in the Iceland and Greenland seas. Uh, these observations came from aircraft uh, measurements uh, taken using the British Antarctic Survey Massin uh, Twin Otter aircraft. These plots show uh, the momentum exchange coefficient or the drag coefficient as a function of sea ice fraction. We've got the acacia data on the left and the IGP data on the right. So the observations are shown in these box and whiskers with the black values. So the black squares being the uh, median values. So for the acacia data set, you can see that the peak um, drag coefficients are uh, over the marginal ice zone between ice fractions of 0 0.5 and 1. Um, this is typical. Uh, it reflects the fact that uh, typically the marginal ice zone is rougher than consolidated ice and, and seawater, as, as I explained earlier. Um, but actually for the IGP, um, the peak values are over the consolidated ice. Um, and generally, the uh, drag coefficients are much greater than during acacia uh, across all ice fractions. So over the top of these observations, I've plotted the functional forms of the um, uh, surface exchange prioritization schemes from the Met Office Unified model and the ECMWF IFS model. And you can see that these schemes generally do a, a really good job. Um, uh, that is uh, provided that they are uh, that, that we prescribe here the um, the values, the drag coefficients um, uh, from the observations at ice fractions of zero and one. Now, just to highlight uh, the most pertinent point from that previous slide, that is that the uh, drag coefficients were much greater during IGP than during acacia, uh, which implies that the, um, that the sea ice was much rougher during IGP than, than during acacia. Also, the winds were um, typically uh, stronger during IGP, and the combination of stronger winds and a rougher surface means that conditions were aerodynamically rougher during IGP. Okay, so on now to look at the scalar exchange coefficient. So this here is the heat exchange coefficient, again, plotted against sea ice fraction. Now, similarly for the drag coefficient, we're seeing typically the highest values at the higher ice fractions. But in contrast to the drag coefficient, this time the 
IGP values are, are generally similar to the um, acacia values as opposed to being uh, far greater. Now again I've plotted the functional forms of the model parentization schemes over the top uh, but this time these schemes only perform well for the acacia data set. Uh, so why is this? Well earlier I explained that these schemes have the uh, surface roughness length for the scalar constituents as proportional to that for momentum and so these ex schemes are expecting that because the drag coefficient or the uh, momentum surface roughness length was so much is so much greater for uh, IGP these schemes are also expecting similarly the uh, scalar exchange coefficients and the scalar roughness lengths to be greater during IGP but that's not the case it's not the case for heat exchange and it's also not the case for moisture exchange for which the story is is very similar so why is there this uh, discrepancy in model performance between the two data sets um, or to frame this question in another way um, why is the heat and moisture exchange so similar in the two data sets um, yet the momentum exchange uh, is so different and to answer this question we're going to go back to uh, a paper by Edgar Andreas from 1987. Uh, he used um, surface renewal theory to investigate uh, surface scalar exchange over snow and ice surfaces. Note not the marginal ice zone. Um, so he developed a conceptual model that yielded a relationship between the ratio of scalar to momentum surface roughness length and the uh, roughness Reynolds number which is uh, a measure of aerodynamic roughness that increases with with wind speed and uh, surface roughness length uh, and so his relationship is shown in, in, in the, the figure on the right here um, uh, and so what he found is that, that there are two dis distinct regimes a smooth regime and a rough regime that, that require two very different uh, treatments two different conceptual models and this difference is, is because in an aerodynamically rough regime uh, surface roughness elements um, extend above the interfacial sublayer, which means you get the int introduction of uh, pressure forces, which changes the relationship between um, uh, scalar and momentum surface exchange. These plots replicate the figure that we saw on the previous slide from the Andreas paper. So they're showing the ratio of scalar to momentum roughness lengths on the um, y axis versus the roughness Reynolds number on the x-axis. So the plot on the left is for heat and the plot on the right is for moisture. Uh, the observations um, are plotted as box and whiskers. These are only the data where, uh, where we're, we're flying over predominantly sea ice. And the reason for limiting our data, data here is because the Andreas uh, model is only appropriate over consolidated sea ice. Um, the Andreas model is in pink and the uh, operational um, unified and IFS models are in blue and green. Remember these operational schemes have um, ZOT and ZOQ proportional to ZO so this is why they're, they're flat lines here and whilst these schemes do okay in the aerodynamically smooth regime they um, vastly overestimate the ratio of scalar to momentum roughness lengths in an aerodynamically rough regime whereas the Andreas model captures uh, this decrease in, in, in the scalar roughness length relative to the momentum roughness length uh, with increasing aerodynamic roughness um, in the aerodynamically rough regime. So in an attempt to improve upon the schemes currently available in operational models, uh, we've developed a new scheme um, which we've named a blended A87 A scheme. Um, this blends the Andreas um, et al 1987 model with uh, a, a, an ocean surface exchange scheme uh, to provide the uh, scalar exchange coefficients across the full range of ice fractions. I'm not going to go into details um, of these uh, equations. Um, these plots here show uh, the same plots that we've seen earlier for, for heat uh, exchange coefficient against sea ice fraction um, for the two data sets. Uh, this time we've added the pink line uh, of the blended A87 scheme and you can see that this scheme does similarly well to the uh, existing model schemes for Acacia but performs much better uh, for IGP as expected uh, given the fact that it does account for the um, impact, uh, the, the, the effect of aerodynamic roughness on 
uh, the relationship between scalar and momentum exchange. And it's a similar story for uh, moisture exchange. OK, so um, we've recently implemented this uh, blended A87 scheme into the Met Office Unified model, and we've run some sensitivity experiments to test its performance for the period of the um, IGP field campaign. And essentially what we find is that the uh, the new scheme does perform much better than the uh, cu current um, operational scheme um, and also that it has a, a marked impact on the evolution of the boundary layer downwind of sea ice. Uh, now these results are the subject of a new paper that we've recently submitted and also my poster presentation at this conference so um, I invite you to, to seek out my, my poster uh, for more details on this work. In conclusion, uh, we've seen that heat and moisture uh, exchange over sea ice and the marginalized zone depends on aerodynamic roughness, and this varies significantly with region and conditions. Um, in existing model schemes, uh, the scalar roughness lengths are proportional to uh, the momentum roughness length, uh, but this is only appropriate in an aerodynamically rough, uh, sorry, smooth regime, is inappropriate in a rough regime. Um, the proposed solution that we have for this problem is a new prioritization that uh, blends the Andreas 1987 scheme with uh, an ocean exchange scheme, and this performs much better for aerodynamically rough uh, uh, conditions. Uh, a remaining obstacle here to progress is the fact that this benefit of accounting for aerodynamic roughness in this scheme largely hinges on an appropriate prescription of the surface roughness length of consolidated sea ice. You may remember that we prescribed this um, in, uh, from observations um, for the analysis that we did here, but in models, this value, uh, it, it, operational models, this value tends to be fixed. So there's, this is a challenge for future work. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, there's uh, time for a quick question. I think Andy's online, hopefully. Uh, Claire. Uh, yeah, thanks. That's really great that you can now account for the roughness length. I was just wondering if your observations of the fluxes were able to tell you anything about whether, so for 100% sea ice, you could have consolidated ice so, or sorry, you could have... Uh, do, do, do you mind starting again? I, I, I was um, kind of... Up, down, and back in again. So I missed the first half of the question. Okay, sorry. Um, no, I was just saying. Well, it's great that you can now account for the roughness length, and that clearly has a big effect. I was just wondering if the observations that you made of the fluxes could tell you anything about the, the type of ice and what the difference is then of the heat and moisture fluxes. So I was just thinking, if you have 100% consolidated ice versus 100% mix of frazzle and other ice types, or for example, I don't know, 20% ice that is some ice flows with leads and broken up ice. Um, yeah, so um, our observations, uh, you know, the, the, the fluxes themselves um, don't really give you a uh, clear indication of, of, of this. Um, yeah, we, we, we have you, we, ha we, we do have uh, laser altimeter um, data and, you know, video data that could be used for, for this type of thing, but it certainly... Um, it, you know, the, the, uh, the, this is the, the, the um, big area of un remaining uncertainty in this work, really. Um, it's trying to, um, uh, well, not so much uncertainty, but um, ha how do we improve uh, operational models? Well, we, we need to look into ways of um, assimilating uh, the roughness over consolidated ice, or, um, and, and this meets. Uh, you know, this is a function of sea ice type, age, thickness, and so on. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, what, what, we, what we find is that these parameterizations, that, uh, schemes that we've developed, are, 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 are you know, um, great for regions, uh, on a region-by-region -region basis, where you can um, prescribe uh, the roughness over, over consolidated ice. Um, but yeah, moving forwards, we need to find a way of consolidate uh, of, of assimilating this information into to models, and, and then yeah, we're, we're looking at um, likely satellite data is uh, is perhaps the, the best route forward here, or, or uh, 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 a CI output from a CI model. Okay, thanks, Andy. That's great. Um